Good afternoon. Oh, it's so wonderful to be standing in this space again after a little while away. Um, our first scripture reading this, this afternoon is Psalm 100 in honor of the hundred years here. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever, and God's faithfulness is to all generations. This is the word of the Lord. I was so excited when Pastor Ashley extended the, the invitation to come and be a part of this service and to bring what I remember um, my life here at First Presbyterian Church in Maryland. I'm really glad that you got emotional on your, on your video because it may happen here as well. Um, but my first recollection of being in this sanctuary was when I was sitting here on this side of the sanctuary about two thirds down I was here with my mom. I think I was somewhere between four and five years old. I was feeling really grown up because children, you know, got to come into the sanctuary on only very special occasions. I'm not sure what that special occasion was that day, but I was invited to be in this very grown up adult space and it felt so holy and so mysterious and it was beautiful. One of the hymns of that day was when Israel was in Egypt's land. And when we sang, let my people go, the organ bass was so low and so strong, it vibrated in my body. And I still remember what that felt like. It was palpable, it was powerful. And 60-something years later, I can still feel it when I'm in this building. That formative hymn is still very powerful to my soul. This sanctuary, this church, has been my church home since infancy when my parents presented me for baptism at this very font with Dr. Reverend Dr. Baird baptizing me. I played in the nursery. I remember so vividly the little kitchen set with all the cute little dishes that we got to play with. I went to Sunday school in all the rooms. I enjoyed VBS in the summer. I learned how to participate in worship as I sang in the children's choirs. And I stood here to lead various parts of worship. I too preached my first sermon here one, one day when Pastor Stephen Carter was sick and his wife called me Saturday night and said, Jan, could you fill in? Okay. <laughs> so um, in those days when my mom couldn't bring me to Sunday school, my grandmother brought me. And the names of the saints who had have gone before us here. I remember Mr. and Mrs. Lawhead, Mrs. Elegant, Mrs. Crow, Dorothy Calistro, all my Sunday school teachers who helped form my faith. In the third grade, I was presented with a Bible, my first Bible, and I still have that Bible. Oh, man, it was in Sunday school where I began learning how to open that text. First, by learning and memorizing all the books of the Bible, and you got prizes for that, which was really fun. Um, learning the special scriptures, the prayers that are so formative to my understanding of faith. 
My husband Tom also grew up in this church on occasion. He would be here. He learned the Lord's Prayer by putting macaroni pieces together on construction paper. Very creative teaching. <laughs> But I remember spending such joyful time here, um, playing all over the campus, exploring the upstairs, wondering who lived in that upstairs apartment that sometimes we would catch a glimpse because they'd open the door and leave it, leave it open and we, who lives in here? Um, peeking down into the catacombs in that winding staircase and wondering who, how, and when do I get to go down there? Finally getting to take a tour of the real bottom of the sanctuary where the, where the furnace is and the air conditioner looks like a big washing machine down there. It's wonderful, it's ex it was exciting, it was so exciting. When I moved away to college in the, in the mid 70s, and as I began my early career as a nurse, we had moved away. And, uh, but then it became time for Tom and I to marry. And we returned to our home church, and we stood in this very place with Reverend Dr. McCullough as we took our vows. And finally, when we did move back to Stockton in the early 80s, we were welcomed back here. Welcome back just like old family members coming back to coming back home. Kim Reuter met me in Westminster Hall. I had never met her before, but it was like we were old friends. I thought maybe I had forgotten her. <laughs> but no, she just welcomed us and, and we were here. My grandmother is the one who brought us here, brought her family here, um, her, her children, and began our family legacy of being part of this church family. Generations of my family have been married here. <sighs> baptized here. Memorialized here. We have celebrated here in this space. When Tom and I did return home here and we began bringing our four small children to worship, I was so worried that they were going to make noise and dis disturb people. And I would try to get up and take them out. Didn't matter what I had packed in the activity bag, one of them was not gonna have it. But it was Emmy Bosch who told me, Jan, God wants your children here. They will learn how to be in worship here with you. <sighs> Our milestones here in this church have been marked by the rituals that have strengthened us and held us together. This has been our family. Even when we moved away from Texas, we returned when our son Andrew died suddenly here in Stockton. And this church community welcomed us back as into the fold, just like, just like, of course, we were family. Pastor Gus officiated at his service and reminded me that when Gus was a seminary intern during the history of this church, he had Andrew portray blind Bartimaeus in worship to illustrate a Bible lesson that day. You all have held us and loved us, and reminded us that even when we are geographically far, we are never far from your hearts. We are never outside the family. This church is so much more than this beautiful building. It is the space that reminds us that we are all part of God's family, no matter at what point in history or in our life's journey we found ourselves here. It is truly a sanctuary of love and care and enduring hope. Psalm 100 reminds us, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness is to all generations. God is good. God is faithful. And we joyfully remember the faithfulness of the generations past 
and our part in that history, as well as we remember why and how we are called as God's family in this place and this time. We are called to share the love of God that graciously sheds love over all of us. And we do that by worshiping with praise and thanksgiving, singing joyfully, singing joyfully, joyfully of God's enduring love and to show this incredible love with those that we meet along our own individual journeys, no matter where that takes us. God has been here in my journey as God is in all of your journeys. Thanks be to God. Thank you for letting me be here and share my time with you.